one. Daddy, I don't know what this Hi, is. my name is Evan, and today I'm going to be reading Rick Riordan, and making his chase from the gods of Asgard. Number one, the Sword of Summer. Let's begin. Chapter one. Good morning. You're going to die. Yeah, I know. You guys are going to read about how I died in Nagoni, and you're going to be like, wow, that sounds cool. Magnus, can I die in Nagoni too? No, just no. Don't go jumping off any rooftops. Don't run into any high or set yourself on fire. It doesn't work that way. You will not end up where I ended up. Besides, you wouldn't want to deal with my situation unless you've got some crazy desire to see undead warriors hacking one another to pieces. So we're twine up giants' noses and dark elves and snappy outfits you shouldn't even think about finding in the wolf-headed doors. My name is Megan's Chase. I'm 16 years old. This is the story of how my life went downhill and I, after I got myself killed. My day started out normal enough. I was sleeping on the sidewalk under a bridge in the public garden when a guy kicked me awake and said, They're after you. By the way, I've been homeless for the past two years. Some of you may think, oh, how sad. No, Others may think, ha ha, loser. But if you saw me on the streets, 99% of you would walk right past like I'm invisible. You'd pray. Don't let him ask, for, ask me for money. You'd wonder if I'm older than I look. Because surely a teenager wouldn't be wrapped in a stinky, old, sleeping bag, stuck outside in the middle of a Boston winter. Somebody should help that poor boy. Then you'd keep walking. You have to. Whatever. I don't need your symphony. I'm used to being laughed at. I'm definitely used to being ignored. Let's move on. The bum who woke me was a guy called Blitz, as usual. He looked like he'd been running through a dirty hurricane. His wiry black hair was full of paper scraps and twigs. His face was the color of a saddle letter, and he was flecked with ice. His beard curled in all directions. Snow caked the bottom of his trench coat when it dragged across around his feet. Blitz being about five feet five, and his eyes were so dilated, the irises were all pupil. His permanently alarm expression made him look like he might start screaming any second. I blinked the gunk out of my eyes. My mouth tasted like a day-old hamburger. My sweeping bake was warm, and I really didn't want to get out of it. Who's after me? Not sure. Wilson rubbed his nose, which had been broken so many times, it zigzagged like lightning bolts. They're handing out flyers with your name and pictures. I cursed. Random police and park rangers. I could deal with truant officers, community service volunteers, drunken... College kids, addicts, looks to roll somebody small and weak. All those who would have been as easy to wake up as to as pancakes and orange juice. But when someone knew my my name and my face, that was bad. That meant they were targeting me specifically. Maybe the folks at the shelter were mad at me for working those ster- the stereo. Those Christmas carols have been driven me crazy. Maybe a security camera caught that last bit of pickpocketing I did in the theater district. Hey, I need money for pizza. Or maybe, unlikely as it seemed, the police were still looking for me, wanting to ask questions about my mom's murder. I picked my stuff up, which took about three seconds. The the sweeping bag rolled up tight and fit in my backpack with my toothbrush and change of socks and underwear. Except for the clothes on my back, that that's all I owned. With the backpack over my shoulders and the hood of my jacket pulled though I could blend in with pedestrian traffic pretty well. Boston was full of college kids. Some of them were even more scraggly and younger looking than me. I turned to Blitz. Where do you see these people with the flyers? Beacon Street. They're coming this way. Middle-aged white guy and teenage girl. Probably his daughter. I frowned. That makes no sense. Who? I don't know, kid, but I gotta go. But squinted up the sun rays, which was turning the skyscraper windows orange. For reasons I've never quite understood, Blitz hated the daylight. Maybe he was the world's shortest, stoutest, homeless vampire. 
You should go see her. He is hanging out in the Copley Square. I try not to feel irritated. The, sh the local street people jokingly called her from which my mom and dad because one or the other always seemed to be huffing around me. I appreciate it, I said. I'll be fine. Which chewed his thumbnail? I don't know, kid. Not today. You gotta be extra careful. Why? I glanced over my shoulder. They're coming. I didn't see anybody. When I turned back, Witz was gone. I hate it when he did that. Just poof. The guy was like a ninja. A homeless vampire ninja. Now I had a cho choice. Go to Copley Scare and hang out with her or head towards Beacon Street and try to spot the people who are looking for me. Which description of, of them made me curious? A middle-aged white guy and a teenage girl searching for me at sunrise on a bitter cold morning? Why? Who were they? I crept along the edge of the pond. Almost nobody took the lower trail under the bridge. I could hug the side of the hill and spot anyone approaching on the higher path without them seeing me. Snow coated the ground. The sky was an eye achingly blue. The bare tree branches looked like they'd been dipped in glass. The wind cut through my layers of clothes, but I didn't mind the cold. My mom used to joke that I was half polar bear. Damn it, Magnus, I tried myself. After two years, my memories of her were still a minefield. I stumbled over one, and instantly my composure was blown to bits. I tried to focus. The man and girl were coming this way. The man's sandy hair grew over his collar, not like his, an intentional style, but like he couldn't be bothered to cut it. His baffled expression reminded me of, sub, of a substitute teacher's. I know I was hit by a spitwad, but I have no idea where it came from. His dress shoes were totally raw for Boston weather. His socks were different shades of brown. His tie looked like it had been tied while he spun around in the darkness. The girl was definitely his daughter. Her hair was just as thick and wavy, though lighter blonde. She was dressed more sensibly in snow boots, jeans, and a parka, with an orange t-shirt pecking out at the neckline. Her expression was more de determined angry. She gripped a sheaf of flyers that were likely SHG being graded on unfairly. If she was looking for me, I did not want to be founded. She was scary. I didn't recognize her or her dad, but something tugged at the back of my skull. Like a magnet trying to... <coughs> like a magnet trying to pull out an old memory. Father and daughter stopped where the path worked. They looked around as if it just now realizing they were standing in the middle of a deserted park at no thank you o'clock in the dead of winter. Unbelievable, said the girl. I want to strangle him. Assuming she meant me, I hungered down a little more. Her dad sighed. We should probably avoid killing him. He is your uncle. But two years? The girl demanded. Dad, how could he not tell us for two years? I can't explain Randolph's actions. If I could, I never could, Annabeth. Inhaled so sharply, I was afraid they would hear me. A scab was ripped off my brain, exposing raw memories from when I was six years old. Annabeth, which meant the sandy-haired man was Uncle Frederick. I flashed back the last family Thanksgiving we'd shared. Annabeth and me hiding in the library at Uncle Randolph's townhouse, playing with dominoes while the adults yelled at each other downstairs. You're lucky you live with your mama. Annabeth stacked another domino on her miniature building. It was amazingly good, with columns in front of like a temple. I'm going to run away. I, I had no doubt she meant it. I was in awe of her confidence. Then Uncle Frederick appeared in the door. His fists were clenched. His grim expression was at odds with the spelling reindeer on his sweater. Annabeth, we're leaving. Annabeth looks at me. Her gray eyes were a little fierce for a first graders. Be safe, Magnus. With a flick of her finger, she knocked over her domino temple. That was the last time I'd seen her. 
Afterwards, my mom had been adamant 